All right, this lesson is very similar to the last lesson we had, except it's a tad more intense. In fact, this is the point in your mathematical career where you become big boys and girls. You guys have gotten better and better and better as time has gone on. We are now two-thirds of the way through the school year for you seniors. And you're reaching a point now where you're becoming much more comfortable, much more familiar with the processes that is necessary to get through the maze that we call calculus to come up with a final answer. This is going to push you even farther. This is nothing really new. This is a combination of things being thrown together as is the want of calculus. And we are creating a new thing based upon old concepts being blended together. This is called change of variables. And what we are going to do is we're going to take a, a, an expression that could be very challenging to integrate and we're going to put it into um, a different variable as a substitute for the semi-complexities of what is being thrown at you. And I'll show you what I mean. But we're basing all this uh, in the book on theorem 414 called change of variables for definite uh, integrals. Um, and so we are going to go, if you had a closed system from A to B, uh, your uh, integration of a function of a function times the uh, derivative of that uh, function inside is going to go from A to B for a function of U instead of whatever X we used. Now, that's for uh, definite integrals, and we're also going to be using that for indefinite integrals. In fact, the assignment today is going to deal with indefinite integrals, meaning there is no A and there is no B, but we are going to get a general equation that's going to allow us to plug in A's and B's if necessary. Okay? And um, the best way to describe this is by looking at some uh, odd number problems associated with the even number problems we have here. We're going to do uh, two odd number problems to kind of get you a feel for what's going on, and then I'm going to let you have at it with the even numbers that were shown here. We'll come back to that. Problem number 63. In problem number 63, <clears throat> we're trying to find the integration of x times the square root of x plus 2 dx. Life would be a lot easier if we can get rid of this x plus 2 and replace it with a variable u. So that's what we're doing. We're going to take u and set it equal to x plus 2. All right, now we've done this back when we did derivations and we're doing the same thing uh, here with integrations. This is called the chain rule. Now, for this uh, x right here, the dx, the du would equal the dx, but this x here is gonna be an issue because there's no way that we can set the two equal to each other like we did in the last section. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this equation and rewrite it in terms of x, and then whatever x is equal to, like in this case is u minus 2, we're going to replace the u with u minus 2, and we're going to go from there. So this is what we get. We replace x with u minus 2. We replace x plus 2 in this radical to u to the 1 half power. And since we said dx and du are the same thing, that's what we're going to get. Okay? Now, we got this du dx by taking the derivative of x plus 2, and the derivative of u is equal to the derivative of x plus 2, and that's where we get du because dx, in case you're confused as to where I got that from. Okay? Now, next thing we're going to do here is we're going to distribute the u to the 1 half power across both of these, and this gives us the u to the 3 halves minus 2u to the 1 half. And we still have the du um, that is going to multiply both of these in theory. Then we go ahead and integrate that. And again, as integration asks us to do, if you increase by one, because it's the antiderivative, then you're going to divide by the new denominator, five halves. Same thing here, one half plus one is three halves, and then we divide that by the new uh, denominator, three halves. And so we get this ugliness plus c. And everything's going to be plus c from now on, because again, we're dealing with indefinite derivatives. And we, if this was a definite derivative, we wouldn't even worry about the C because they would cancel out in both situations. And then we just subtract the values of A to B. But that's not what we're doing here. 
So this is all mathematical uh, manipulation at this point. Okay, so uh, if you divide by five halves, it's multiplied by two fifths, so that's where we get that from. Flip that, and two times negative two is negative four, so negative four u, three halves over three, plus c. All right, then at this point, this, is, this has gotten me through that, and now at this point, I'm going to um, substitute uh, x plus two for u. Now, you don't have to do this at this point. If you want to go ahead and stick with this and take this uh, U situation all the way to its end point and then plug in X plus 2, you're still going to have steps of deriving X, uh, of manipulating X plus 2. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference. You're going to end up with the answer at some point. So you can kind of experiment with that if you so desire. Regardless, lowest common denominator because we're subtracting fractions is 15. And so uh, when we do that, we take 5 goes into 15 3 times, 3 times 2 is 6. 3 goes into 15 5 times, 5 times negative 4 is negative 20, plus C. At this point now, we look for common factors to take out. These are both even numbers, so we know at least a 2 will be taken out. In fact, that's all that will be taken out as a 2. We see that we have uh, 5 halves x to, uh, plus 2 is here and 3 halves x plus 2 here. So we factor out x plus 2 to the 3 halves. And then go ahead and divide this into each term. This um, 2 times x plus 2 to the 3 halves into each term. And the result is placed over here. So if we have 2 goes into 6 3 times and x plus 2 to the 3 halves goes into x plus 2 to the 5 halves. Well, when you divide like bases, you subtract exponents. 5 halves minus 3 halves is 1. So this is technically 3 times x plus 2 to the first power. Do the same thing over here. We take 2 goes into negative 20, negative 10 times. And x plus 2 to the 3 halves goes into x plus 2 to the 3 halves one time. So this is just minus 10 or negative 10, depending on how you want to look at it. The denominator is still 15. So now we um, distribute the 3 across this parenthesis here. It gives us 3x plus 6. Everything else stays the same. And then we combine like terms here, which is 6 and negative 10. And that gives us 3x minus 4. And that is your integration for that particular um, function. It's a long road, but there's not one thing we did there that is tricky. There's not one thing that we did there that was unknown before now. This is all the same stuff. Even the chain rule, which we dealt with back when in derivation, is being used again in terms of integration. No difference at all. And so your, your involvement as a math student should be able to handle this. If not, Redo this on your own. See how, how you can come up with it. See where you are messing up in the steps going on here, and that will be a red flag for you to look out for that in the problems. Let's do another.